In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a digital oil sketch using Photoshop. I'm using a Wacom 22HD Cintiq digital display tablet for this. I've wanted one for a long time and I finally got one, so I decided to record my first oil sketch. First thing we need to do is just prepare the canvas and I want to paint on a nice neutral gray background, so I'll set that up first. Now I'm using a special set of brushes by an artist named Kyle Webster. And I'll provide a link to that below the video on my website. If you'll follow the link underneath the video back to the website, if you're on YouTube, you can get uh, a link to his website to purchase these brushes. These are the same brushes that uh, illustrators at Disney and Marvel use. Uh, so they are uh, some pretty good brushes and they respond pretty naturally on the drawing tablet. Um, I'm using an HB pencil here to sketch out the drawing and that's the name of the brush of course. It's Kyle's HB pencil. And I'm going to just create a loose sketch here on the canvas and then we're going to go over the top of it with uh, some oil brushes and the oil brushes will behave like real oils. It's pretty crazy the way that works. The color mixes right on the surface and uh, there's smooth gradations between value and color. So it's great that we're able to take advantage of that because of course mistakes are very easy to fix on a computer working with the tablet. Uh, not so easy to fix when you're working on canvas with real live oils. So I'm just sketching out things here and I'm making a few notes as I, I go along here. For example, on the finished painting, there's a UPC code here. So I'm going to draw a little shape for that. There's a huge crease that happens in the middle part of the paint tube. And if you have followed me on YouTube or if you have visited the website, you may notice that I've used this photo reference before uh, we used. Uh, water-soluble graphite for that demonstration for the live lessons. So I thought it'd be fun to turn that into a digital painting. It's a little ironic since we're painting a paint tube on a uh, digital canvas, if you will. All right, now that I've got everything sketched out, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, the real oil brush here provided by Kyle. And I'm going to start with a very light gray. It might almost appear as a white when I first put it on the surface. I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger for this. It's still a relatively small brush. And then I'm just going to start pulling out marks. Now, I'm not going to create this on a new layer. I'm going to allow the gray on the surface to naturally mix with the color that I put on here. Uh, normally, if you're doing a digital painting, you might want to work in multiple layers, but for this initial uh, digital painting, I want it to kind of keep it as pure as possible. Since I am a, a traditionally trained artist, uh, this is just kind of a more natural way to work for me here for this particular example anyway. So I've switched over to a little bit of a darker gray here, and I'm just going to slowly build up the value relationships that happen in the photo reference, just like I would with a regular painting. Now maybe a little bit of a darker gray to start to establish some of those darker shadows. And I'm not sure if you can see this in the video or not, but um, those colors are mixing very naturally like uh, oil paint would. And it's pretty much a heavier application of oil paint. So the color can only be pulled so far before it becomes strong again. In other words, when another color is right next to it, it'll only mix so much and then um, the color that you're working with kind of takes over. Now, of course, you can adjust the amount of pressure that you put on the tablet if you're using the tablet. And the heavier pressure will produce, of course, more color coming out of the brush, which will make it a little bit stronger and overpower the color underneath. If you put a little bit less pressure on the brush, however, uh, more mixing will happen, just like wet oils. So I'll just continue to develop the values here. I'm just working with a variety of grays. And uh, then we're going to add just a pop of color here and there and uh, finish things off with some highlights. 
So you have to be patient with this, just like you would be patient with a traditional drawing or painting. A lot of people look at a digital drawing or painting and think that it's created with just a couple of clicks of a mouse, or maybe they've thrown a filter on there, but it's really very closely related to traditional drawing and painting. The only difference is your surface is a digital one, of course. All right, now there's a big label right down the middle, so you might have seen me fill in that dark space right in the center. I'm also gonna take that dark gray. It's not quite black. I'm gonna move it in a couple other areas um, just to start to push the value range. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the letters on here. Of course, this is a uh, golden acrylic paint tube here. And so uh, the golden paint tubes have the golden label written right down the middle. You can kind of see how painterly this looks, even though it's completely digital. And then we'll put a little bit of cast shadow down here. I'm going to start with a darker cast shadow. I may go back and lighten that up just a bit. Now we'll add just a bit of color here. And of course, this is the color of the paint tube. Maybe it's a raw sienna. It's a little bit different than what's in the photo reference that I used, but um, just going to make it a little bit more of an earthier tone. And of course, there's a little bit of a shadow that is happening where the paint tube is creased inward. Since our light source is originating from the left side, or basically the upper left hand corner, some of that light's not able to get back there and it's a little bit in shadow. Now we'll make the brush a little bit smaller and uh, start creating those lines for the UPC code. I'm using a dark, dark gray here, almost black, to do this. And we're going to follow the contours of the tube to uh, make that UPC code look believable. We'll also add a couple of numbers or maybe just an indication of some numbers there in between each one of those little patterns. And without too much detail, we'll add some writing on the front of the paint tube as well. And it's important to follow the cross contours of the shape of the tube too. So uh, as those letters go up and over across the top, that will help make it look a little bit more believable. Now there's a, a strong line on the packaging here. So we're going to go over that with a, a nice darker value, make that line a little bit crisper. And then maybe we'll bring that dark value over just underneath the cap where there's a, a bit of shadow underneath it. And maybe on the inside of the ring of the cap as well, we'll, we'll make that highlight a little bit stronger by adding a little bit of a darker value right next to it. And we'll just define the shape of the cap a little bit further with this darker value. All right, now we'll add the writing that's underneath the golden label. And uh, this says artist colors, of course. We don't have to be too perfect with this. Of course, it is a, a digital sketch after all. Now I'm just gonna create a little bit of a crease right underneath the E and the N. So I can go back in with uh, some of those grays. I'm gonna take the crease out that was actually further down the tube. You see how easy that is to fix. Of course, you can fix those things with traditional oil paint. It just takes a little bit more work. We'll enhance that highlight right there on the edge of the paint tube just a little bit further. Make the light source look just a touch stronger. And we'll clean up the edges around the shadow underneath. Make there be a little bit of a smoother transition from that shadow to the surface that it's on. Still going to be a relatively hard shadow, pretty dark shadow there. All right, the next thing is we're going to touch up some of our highlights. Maybe we'll add a little bit of a reflected highlight right underneath the bottom part of that paint tube. And now it's time to add some of those really strong highlights that will really make the paint tube look shiny and reflective. 
This is really the most fun part of the painting for me. And whether it be a traditional painting or a digital painting like this one, I always like to save those really strong highlights to the very last part because they really just make the painting pop. So anywhere where we have a crease that's kind of popping up or a little bit of reflection on the metal part of the paint tube, we want to make that pop out a little bit more with uh, a strong highlight. And we've got a couple of strong highlights right on the very end of the tube. And then we'll just add somewhat of a broken line here to create our very last highlight there, just going up right up the side of the paint tube. Now that we've got our sketch complete, we can crop it and create a, a good composition here. So I'm just going to pull out a space and define the picture plane and crop the image. And then our digital oil sketch is complete. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more, why not check out five video courses, weekly live instruction, and over 6,280 minutes of art instruction, which includes video courses, downloadable eBooks, weekly live lessons streamed across the internet, and lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the learn more now button to start learning today.